happy people i'm back with another video and today i have a review for some gel polishes um you are sugar reached out to me and wanted me to test out some of their products and yeah let me show you all what they sent me so these are the items that they sent they sent over a couple of gel polishes and so i'm just going to take them out the packaging so we can get them swatched These are the colors that they sent over. Um, let's see, it looks like they do have numbers on them. The first thing I'm noticing about the packaging though is that it's made out of plastic and not uh, glass, which is interesting. Um, I've actually purchased some of their products before um, when I first got into doing my nails. I found them on eBay and I got some of their polishes and I did notice that some of their bottles were plastic too. Um, I'm not the biggest fan of that, but we'll see um, how these polishes actually perform. So the first color they sent over is URN012 and it looks like it's a really pretty, ooh, yeah, it's really pretty, it's a really pretty like red color. Yeah, it's a really nice glitter shimmer red color. It's really pretty. Something that'd be good for like Christmas time, you know? So that's the first color. The next one here is UR05. And these, this is a reflective glitter cat eye magnet gel. So, oh my God, that's what that looks like. That's really gorgeous. Okay, that's like a purpley, kind of gray tone purple color, really pretty. Um, next we have, it's a reflective fluorescent gel, okay. Ooh, that's pretty. Yeah, I think I'm gonna use this in the set. Look at that. Holy smokes, it's like a mint green that has these really fine silver glitters. This is stunning. It's a reflective fluorescent gel. I really like that, that's really pretty. And next we have a reflective, another reflective cat eye here. And that is this beautiful silver cat eye color. Yeah, that's gorgeous, y'all, that's gorgeous. Absolutely love it. So it's reflective cat eye. I don't think I've worked with any reflective cat eyes before. Then the last one is a reflective fluorescent gel. Wow, and that's in this pretty orange color. I think I'm tempted to do this orange and this blue. Like these colors are absolutely stunning. But before we do that, this is the URR012. So I'm gonna go ahead and get all of these swatched. So first we have this URN012, which is this really beautiful red shimmer color. Okay. Yeah, the glitters in here look pretty chunky, but it's a really beautiful color. It's almost like a stained, like a red stained glass kind of effect. That's really pretty. Like, this is perfect for Christmas time, you know? It's a really nice, pretty red for Christmas. You want to just kind of place the glitters, you know, where you want them to be. All right. So, yeah, that's what one coat of coverage looks like. Looks like pretty good coverage for like a jelly type glitter. So I'm gonna cure that. Next I'm gonna go in with the URR020. And this is really beautiful blue reflective. Oh my gosh, it's gorgeous. Absolutely gorgeous. And I like this a lot. I think I'm gonna have to use this color, y'all. This is what we're doing today, okay? This is pretty, really, really pretty. I really like this color a lot, okay? So it's like a nice soft green here. Yeah, the coverage is like, it's not really opaque, but it's not like super sheer either. Um, it's like kind of in the middle there, you know? So definitely you'll need two coats of this polish, you know? And then the last one we have here is URR012. And that's this really beautiful orange color. That's really nice. I like it a lot, okay? I like it a lot. I, like, I really like the colors that I chose. Um, but again, the opacity, it's like, kind of in the middle there so I'll definitely have to go in with two coats of this the next color we have here is the UR05 which is like the reflective cat eye polish <laughs> oh yeah that's pretty so I'm swatching it on a black swatch stick really for us to be able to see that cat eye really good 
And I'm also gonna swatch it on a clear swatch stick. So yeah, that's really gorgeous. Y'all see how gorgeous this color is? Yeah, it's kind of like a, a purplish silver color. That's really nice. And then I forgot to mention too, they did include a magnet. It's supposed to be able to just like move. Ooh, did y'all see that? <laughs> So y'all can see the reflectiveness in there. So I'm gonna go ahead and cure that. Kind of like a little wave I made there. And then the last color color we have here is the UR01. Holy smokes, this is beautiful. It's like an all shimmery. Oh my gosh, y'all see this? Holy smokes, that's really nice. I love all the like reflective pieces in here. Oh my god, that is gorgeous. That is really, really nice. I really like this this color a lot. I like all the reflective pieces in there, the glitters, the golds. That is really gorgeous. So let me see if I can play around with this too and see what it'll do. Like so. Come around this side and come around this side. So it kind of creates like that little wave effect, you know? Okay, so this is what all the polishes are looking like with just one coat. I am going to go ahead and do the second coat off camera and I'll be right back. So the first color we have here is the URN012 and again it's a really pretty glittery red color. Next color we have here is the URN20. It's a really pretty kind of mint green reflective polish. I think it's really beautiful. The next color we have here is the URR012. It's a really beautiful bright orange reflective polish. I'm really liking the color on this as well. I'm thinking um, these two colors are probably gonna be what I use in my set today. Then for the two reflective polishes, um, the first one here is the UR01, okay? And I did go ahead and swatch that on a black and a clear swatch stick. So you all can kind of see the difference of the two. Obviously on the black swatch stick, it's gonna pop a little bit better, but I also like how it looks just like as is. It looks like a really beautiful shimmer. Then the very last color here is the UR05. And that's what this looks like, swatch on a clear swatch stick as well as a black swatch stick. Okay, and one thing I also wanted to point out too about the gel polishes here, it does say that they are 7.5 ml, which is what, 0.26? Uh, fluid ounces now I like I mentioned previously I have purchased you are sugar before I actually purchased this from eBay about like maybe eight or nine months ago and I don't know this one also says that it's 7.5 and 0 0.26 fluid ounces so I'm not really sure to me the bottles look different like this one actually looks smaller and this one looks bigger but I mean it could just be me so y'all can let me know maybe they repackage um, their gel polishes and such but um, it's a little weird to me that they're both 7.5 ml but you know one looks smaller than the other so eh, just an observation I made there all of these colors are absolutely stunning um, oh and before I forget let me show you all the reflect on here all of these polishes are reflective holy smokes do y'all see the reflect in them though Especially these cat eye polishes. Oh my gosh, it's absolutely stunning. Wow, you guys. Yeah, so the reflect on it definitely works. It is absolutely beautiful, wow. Okay, happy people, I am back and I've decided what look I wanna do. I've already applied my square tips off camera. These are the square tips that I use that I absolutely love. I actually got these from Shein. Today I'm actually gonna be sculpting some acrylic nails. I'm excited about this. This is my second time doing it. Um, last week during my premiere, I asked you all if you all wanted me to do dip powder nails or acrylic nails and most people said acrylic, so that's what I'm gonna be doing. I'm gonna be going in with the color Cover Earth by Young Nails. I hauled this a couple of months ago and I have been dying to try this powder for the absolute longest. So I'm super excited to be giving it a go. It's like this beautiful new color that I think is gonna be perfect for my skin tone. And I have my Young Nails monomer that I'm gonna be using. And then this is just a cheapy acrylic brush that I got from my beauty supply store. These have been working out for me so far. And so yeah, y'all, let's see how this acrylic application goes. This time when I apply my acrylic, I'm actually going to be going in with my dominant hand, which I'm excited about. So I am gonna start with my index finger here, okay? And I'm gonna do um, where I do half of the tip first and then kind of build up my the structure of the nail. I've been watching a lot of Young Nails videos. I absolutely love how they instruct and teach people how to do acrylic. So I'm gonna go ahead and pick up my first bead and set it down. 
And I really like working with this acrylic too because it's like super easy to like mold and put in place. So yeah y'all. Pick up a little bit of a bigger bead. And then set it down right here. So when I do my acrylic application, I kind of just count to three. Let me actually move my monomer here so y'all can see me dab. So I do this and I do one tap on the dish. And then in my powder, I just do one, two, three, just bounce it. And then I go ahead and apply it. So I think as I'm doing this, I'm just gonna try to get closer and closer to the cuticle every time I set a bead down. It's a really pretty color. Next, I'm gonna do my cuticle area here. And I'm gonna try to get nice and close to the cuticle. And another thing I wanna focus on with my application as I'm like learning to sculpt my nails is my apex. I kinda was going back and looking at some of my other tutorials where I built up my acrylic nails and then also my most recent poly gel set that I did. And I noticed that that apex was pretty big on there. Like it was, I think it was too big for the, like the, the length of the nail that I have. And so I'm gonna try to focus on not having such a high apex and just having something that really suits the length of my nail. So that's what I'm gonna try to focus on. Oops, I guess I didn't let the bottom get all the way in there. But yeah, I'm just gonna go ahead and just kind of sculpt, finish sculpting the nail, lay down a little bit more acrylic, and then move on to the next nail. And so y'all see the apex on this nail. I actually think that's good enough. I'll uh, insert a picture of my last set that I did, but the apex was like really high. And I think this is probably just as big as the apex needs to be, you know? So that's that. And then I don't feel like the nails are too thick. I think this is good enough. I'm gonna actually, I'm gonna go in with one more layer. I'm gonna go in with one more layer just to make sure I have enough structure here, okay? And then I think we'll be good to go. So I'm gonna set the bead down right here. I'm gonna move it back to the cuticle as much as I can here. And then I'm just gonna go a little on the brush here and just kinda try to blend everything down into the nail. I think I let the set too long. <laughs> Okay, happy people, I just wanted to pop in really quick. So at this point, I'm actually trying to smooth out the acrylic that has kind of already set into place. Um, so I'm literally just going over the same area with um, a brush full of monomer just to try to get it to smooth out. Um, I did the best that I could with that. And then I decided to go in with just one more bead to try to build up um, a little bit more thickness on the tip of the nail so that when I went in to file, I wasn't filing all the way down to the clear tip. So that's the first nail right here. I do think I probably added too much for the apex, but that's something I'll just continue to work on and maybe I'll try to debulk during application, I mean during filing. So yeah, yeah I'm gonna go ahead and move on to the next nail here. And I'm gonna start at the tip where the tip meets the actual natural nail. And then just kind of let the product flow down a little bit. I wanna work it back first and then work it down like so. All right, so as I was applying the acrylic to this nail, I noticed that um, it, it kind of felt like I wasn't picking up a big enough bead to cover the surface area that I wanted to cover. And so I think that lets me know that maybe I'm ready to try a bigger acrylic brush. Um, I believe that this brush is like a size six or maybe even an eight. I think it's a six though. And because I wasn't picking up big enough beads, um, I feel like I had to go in with way more than I actually wanted to. Um, and then also right here, you all can see that I let the acrylic cure again. And so I was trying to smooth it out did the best that I could again. And so now I'm just kind of building up the thickness of the nail. So moving forward, I think I am gonna go ahead and pull out some of my bigger acrylic brushes so that I can start working with bigger beads and maybe be able to complete my acrylic application a little bit quicker. So yeah, just wanted to pop in and note the observation. Yeah, y'all, I think that lets me know I'm getting pretty comfortable with acrylic. So yeah, I'm moving on up in the world.
Okay, so I think I need to build up the thickness of this nail a little bit more. So that's what I'm gonna do. Hey y'all, so as I was recording, someone started mowing their grass and when I do my acrylic nails, my window has to be open. So the mower was really loud in the background. So I thought this would be the perfect opportunity to explain how I pick my beads up. So as you can see, I dabbed my brush into the monomer. I did one tap on the side of the dapping dish and then I tapped slowly three times. I kind of essentially just bounced the um, acrylic into the powder and I let it set on my brush for about five, three to five seconds before setting the bead down. I try to work the back of the bead first into the nail just to try to get it to blend a little bit. And then afterwards I go with the top of the bead and then smooth it down towards the free edge of the nail. And so I went ahead and repeated this process, um, trying to slowly get closer and closer to the cuticle with each bead that I place down until I was able to build up the structure as far as the uh, height of the apex that I wanted and the thickness of the nail. So as I was watching myself do this particular nail, um, I'm realizing that I don't think this brush is that great for application. Like I think it's good for me when I was first starting off applying acrylics, um, but I think I'm, I'm getting to the point where I, I need a higher quality brush. Cause as you can see, some of the acrylic is kind of sitting on the brush as I'm trying to mold it into shape. And um, when I go to clean up the sidewall, I'm not able to move the acrylic away from my skin as easily because the brush was kind of on the softer side. So if you all have any recommendations on some high quality or really good acrylic brushes, please leave them down in the comments below. I'd be interested to hear about them. All right, y'all, so this is what the first three nails are looking like so far. This is what my shaping is looking like. Um, I think I did a better job at making sure the apex wasn't too high on this set. So I am gonna go ahead and do the pinky and thumbnail off camera. I'm just gonna do the exact same thing. This is what my nails look like after they've been sculpted um, onto the nail bed. Again, I tried to make sure I kept my apex down to a minimum. I think I did okay with that. The thickness is so-so. I didn't want them to be too thick either. So we'll see how filing and shaping goes. I hope it's enough acrylic on there to to file down and shape. I also wanted to show too, uh, this is how much acrylic was on my napkin after I finished sculpting my nails. So I think I'm doing pretty good with like liquid to powder ratio and like not wasting too much product. So yeah. I am ready to file shape and buff. I am gonna go in with my Young Nails file. Um, I feel like these are really good when it comes to filing my nails. So this means that the nails are ready to go. So I'm gonna just go in with the sides first and crispen them up. I'm not gonna film too much of this um, because I do have a dedicated video on how I filed acrylic nails. And I'm pretty much gonna do that same process in this video, but I'm just gonna leave in just a little bit of the footage here, just so that you all can kind of see my process here. I'm gonna go in with my 501 carbide bit. I really like this, uh, to use this bit when I'm filing acrylic nails. Um, and it's probably about time for me to change the sanding band too, but you know, we'll, we'll address that at a different date, okay? Okay. Then I'm gonna go in at maybe like 10 to 15 RPM. While I'm filing, um, I wanted to ask a quick question. So you all know I'm not that good at filing and shaping my nails. I still have my training wheels on and I'm also new to the e-file. So I'm curious to know for those who are very comfortable with an e-file, when you're debulking your nails and are shaping your nails with the e-file, what RPM do you use it at? Because I think in this video, I started off using mine at 15 RPM and I felt like it was too fast, so I moved down to 10. So what's the speed of the e-file that you all are most comfortable with when you're shaping your nails? Okay, happy people. It is like a day later, but this is what the nails are looking like after they've been file shaped and buffed. This time around with filing, I really tried to focus on 
having a more realistic apex for the length of my nails. Um, so I feel like I did okay. You guys let me know how I did in the comments. If this apex is good for this length or if I even need to file it down a little bit more. But I think it's okay. I think my favorite apex that I did on this set is probably this nail right here. It just looks most natural. This one still looks kind of high. And this one, this one looks kind of on the more natural side, but still kind of high. And I feel like the thumb is really good too. So anywho, um, yeah, that's just my shaping situation there. Now it's time to go in with some top coat. I am gonna bring out my little bling here. I am gonna go in with my Madame Glam top coat. I really, really enjoy using the Madame Glam top coat. Alrighty, so this is what the nails look like after they have been top coated and baby. I am absolutely loving how this nude is looking against my skin tone. Holy smokes, it is like the perfect nude for this melanated skin. Okay, so now I have decided what design we're going to do. Um, this is just another look at my shaping really quick. I am going to go in with these three colors here. And I am using my Warm Pretty Detailer brush for this. I don't even know what this design is called. It's like a box half rich or something I'm not really sure but first what I'm gonna do is go in with this silver color and draw a line straight down the middle of the nail and then I'm gonna draw a line to the side and then just fill it in I feel like getting a straight line on camera is not gonna be as easy as I did my thumb but we are gonna give it a go here so we're gonna go straight down the middle okay like so that's perfect and then on the side we're gonna go down you guys can see, let's do like this. And on the side. Like that. And then here in the middle, I'll just kind of have the two connect. So we'll go straight up. Like so. And then to the side again. And then once I have my outline drawn, then I'll go ahead with the actual color itself and just fill it in. And I did do two coats of this. I'm gonna go in with the second layer, like I said, but I don't know if I mentioned this earlier in the video, but I did wanna take a moment and look at the thickness of this gel. It is a little bit on the thicker side. So that is just an FYI for those that are curious. It is of a thicker consistency, which I don't mind. I do like working with polishes that are a little bit on the thicker side, cause it, I feel like it gives me a little bit more control over the product and what I'm doing. That's what that's looking like. Next, I'm gonna go in with this orange color here, and I'm just gonna go a straight line, straight up, like so. And then I'm gonna just deepen the line a little bit more. Like so, that's perfect. So actually, I went too far down. I wanted the line to come across a little bit higher. I have a detailer brush with some alcohol on it. I'm just going to wipe the line down to where I actually wanted it to come across, which is like maybe here. All right, so then I'm gonna take the orange and go across the silver color here. That looks good. I'm gonna go ahead and cure for 10 seconds. And now I'm gonna go in with the blue line right next to that. And then I'm gonna go ahead and connect the two lines right here. So that's what the first nail is looking like. I am gonna repeat that same process for all the nails. And I just realized that I'm making my life a little bit harder with having to wipe this brush off between every color. So I'm gonna go through and do the silver color on all the nails first, and then go in with the orange, and then go in with the, the blue. So well, that's how all of these are looking right now. I'm gonna go ahead and fully cure them for 60 seconds and apply the second layer off camera. I actually forgot to show how I'm gonna activate the cat eye. So you see how it kind of has this reflect. What I'm gonna do is take the little magnet that came with it and just kind of go around the edges of the um, cat eye. And I actually saw this hack on Baby Girl Nails channel as well as Femi Beauty. And so, um, 
yeah y'all I'm trying to use that little hack that she showed in her video if y'all haven't checked their channels out you definitely should they got a lot of great hacks over there but she kind of just moved it around the edge and you see how it kind of creates that reflect so that's kind of what I got going on here and here so I'm going to cure that in place all right I want to show you all that one more time on my pinky so that y'all can see how to do it so you'll go in with a thin layer of the cat eye polish then after that you'll go around just the edges of it and you should be able to see the, the magnets moving and I'm just going to do that around the entire like so and then we'll get more and come around the edges here yeah there it is you see it yeah I'm going to cure that in place wow it's the reflect for me y'all do y'all see that holy smokes that is a cool effect I like that a lot. So I'm just going to draw a straight line next to, like I said, the box that I have on the nail already. And I'm just going to go straight up and down the nail. And I just made the same mistake I made on the first hand. Good gracious. I keep going too far down on the nail. Halfway. So like so. So all of the orange lines have been drawn. Oh my God, that reflect is still getting me out. It's so pretty. Um, so now I'm gonna go in with the blue lines here. So yeah, y'all, as I'm drawing this line, I did wanna say that on my channel, I am wanting to do more freehand nail art. Um, I did do um, a really cool design. I did some Alice in Wonderland theme nails um, last month and it was really fun like being able to kind of express myself creatively and recreate a whole character on the nail like that was just it was really cool and different for me and I kind of want to start implementing that into my channel maybe like once a month it that design did take me a really long time to do so it's obviously not something I'll be able to do every week but I'm thinking maybe like once a month I can go in and maybe have you guys pick what um, you know pick what uh, image I draw so I actually for my Alice in Wonderland nails I drew the the Cheshire cat and I am gonna leave um, an image of what that looked like on the screen here and um, yeah I just want to be able to really further express myself creatively and so um, I want to start doing that at least once a month on the channel so what I'm thinking is I can either leave it on my community tab or on my Instagram so you all can let me know in the comments below which one would be better for you and what I'll do is maybe I'll pick like two images or something and you all can pick between the two or if you all have any ideas or suggestions of images that you want me to draw you can drop it in the comments and then I can kind of put it on like a list of things um, so I'm not exactly sure how I want to do it just yet but I do want to do more freehand nail art um, I want to make sure I'm practicing that skill that I have so yeah y'all I'm going to go ahead and finish up drawing these lines here. Let me know what you guys think about that. And I'll be back once I have everything cured and ready to go. Alrighty, so this is what all of the nails look like. Y'all know my sets ain't complete without a little bit of blingtivity. So in that top coat, I am going to adhere of just a smidge of bling. I'm going with a no wipe top coat for this because I don't want to have to deal with the sticky layer. I'm going to place it right here at the corner of the orange. Just like that and I'm gonna flash through this. Yes, that's beautiful. So I'm gonna go ahead and repeat that process to all the nails. That looks good, I'm gonna cure for 60 seconds. All right, you guys. Say it with me, y'all. Ain't she cute though? Yes, I am loving how this set turned out, y'all. I tried to do something a little bit different with my nail arts and I'm liking how it looked. And do y'all see that cat eye reflect? Holy moly, like that is gorgeous, wow. Again, you guys, uh, this is my second time doing acrylic nails on myself. Let me know what you all think about the set. Let me know what you all think about the design. I'm here for it. Um, so final thoughts on the UR Sugar gel polishes. Um, I think they are a very good beginner friendly uh, gel polish. Um, the consistency is a little bit on the thicker side so I feel like that gives you a little bit more control over the product um, when you're polishing your nails and or doing nail art. Um, I do wish though that their um, 
that the packaging was actually glass and not plastic. Um, I think that it would be better if it was in a glass bottle. Yeah, overall, I think the polishes, like I said, are a good beginner friendly option. So yeah, if y'all are interested in purchasing some of these gel polishes, I do have a 10% off discount code. I am gonna leave that here on the screen as well as down in the description box below. Special thanks to you, our Sugar, for sending these products over for review. I had a lot of fun working with them. But yeah, y'all, I'm really liking how the set turned out and it's the hint of bling for me. That's my thoughts on it. And so you guys, these are reflective polishes. All three of the colors I chose are reflective. So let's see what that reflective looks like. Yes. Do y'all see this reflect though? Oh my God, that is absolutely beautiful. Yes, it looks like the nails are full of freaking crystals. Absolutely love it. That cat eye and that reflect together is just everything. What a fun polish. Absolutely loving that. I do upload every Tuesday, Thursday, and Saturday. Thursdays in particular are my Nail Therapy Thursday premieres where I tune in live with you all as you watch me do my nails. And if you like what you saw here, definitely stick around, join the happy family. I'd love to have you. And as always, you guys, leave some love in the comments down below and I'll see you in my next video. I hope you all have a wonderful, awesome, spectacular day. Bye.